I was born in Iraq, the city of Baghdad, in 2004. I think that is just around the year where the war started. Like, I was only a year old before we left. All my extended family, like my grandparents, my uncles, my cousins, they all stayed in Iraq. You might have noticed that I wear this necklace when I'm on stage. It's a gift from my uncle, who I'm very close with. It is a vintage Iraqi 10 fillis, or 10 cents. It's an old currency used in Iraq. It just has three palm trees on it because the palms are native to Iraq. I wear it all the time. It's just like a reminder of my family that I've had in Iraq. It's a reminder of like the relationship I've had with them. It definitely has been some times where, especially during my first week of stage games, where I was very nervous, where I was like, my head was running like circles, my thoughts. Um, and it would really help keep me grounded when I, whenever I like, remembered I had this necklace on. Berserker under pressure, having a flash away, but Busio's ready to follow. Masu makes sure he gets them both. Flash out of there, there's a heartbreaker from Maxi. Maxi's trying to finish him off, but Masu is hiding out. Masu is still alive. Down, and he's oh. being pushed back, and the Emperor to last, and it's a triple heading on over to Masu. Whenever I think about the sacrifices my parents made, I feel like I have to push myself forward whenever I make a goal, no matter how like tired I would feel or no matter how much I feel like it was unachievable. Just because whenever I remember how much was sacrificed for me to even have the opportunity, it would feel like a slap in the face to half-ass my effort. My name is Fahad Abdul Malik. I'm the ADC for FlatQuest, and some people know me as Masu. Welcome back to the LCS. Be sure to catch the full episode of Masu Drive on it's YouTube. So it is so good. It is so good. Are, are you, is your family really supportive of your pro gaming career? Because uh, his was super supportive, and they're all wearing Masu jerseys <laughs> and watching it and cheering. And I, I was mean, like, that's awesome. Yeah, my, my mom's pretty supportive. I mean, she, has, she hasn't really uh, come over to America. Obviously, she's in Australia, so it's a bit harder for her, but she's Fly her over here. Yeah, yeah, I could fire her. I could fire her for a playoff game. Yeah, for, there you go. For those at home who... Uh, did not know. Uh, we have the fudge factor here on the caster desk. Yes, for sir. Game yes, two. sir. The player of some, the series. <laughs> we're gonna drop some top lane knowledge for us between both Im uh, Impact and Bwipo here. I mean, last game I think Bwipo played quite a bit better than Impact in the in the late he phase. Clapped them in the one v one. Yeah, I mean, I, I showed it in like the post game, mm -hmm. but I think I think the Impact really messed up at level two, level three, and after that it's really really hard for Aatrox to really find his way back, especially with the losing two v two and just lanes losing. So. Hopefully this game he does not pick a bad matchup. I think that matchup is quite bad for Aatrox personally, but uh, people seem to opt into it because it's Zeus once again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, I don't, I don't know how you feel about this, but I've always felt like throughout his career, Impact's an incredible player, but he's not the guy that gets a lot of the fifth pick counter pick on red side. Right, like, but... You know what he's going to play, so right. I, I didn't feel like there was much advantage gained there. there. There wasn't a big advantage. However, you're playing against Whipper, so yeah. don't give him the counter pick. So here, here's the thing, though. So TL ban on their second ban phase, they banned out the Udyr. Why not just take Udyr on four? What do you think they were worried about there? Because um, that's such a good pick for Impact, and it's like, if you're not going to counter pick and you can pick one of your best champions blind, I, I was kind of curious to figure brain, what do you think he was worried about? I, I assume he was just worried about anything other than Darius. I mean, obviously, Whippo plays Darius quite well. I'm sure yeah. he has other counter picks into Udia that are quite annoying, and he's not really used to playing a lot of different matchups. I assume you think Impact... it's just because it's Whippo? Yeah, he it's... has some crazy stuff cooked Whippo, up? Whippo is just really hard to blind pick against. I, I can't really... <laughs> he's very good at, uh, at playing with different drafts. I've got to say then, do you think TL gets enough out of being on red side? Because it's like, if you're not getting much of your fifth pick counter pick, if you're going to be blinding your mid laner, mm -hmm. I feel like if you get no big counter pick advantages on red, you should just go blue. I mean, I think it makes sense though. If you're TL, you don't really want to give Whippo the 5 pick. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it makes sense. Super devastating. Yeah. So like, you'd honestly rather play these standard matchups like Renekton yeah. Aatrox than play Renekton into something random, Rengar like Urgot or, or, God or something, Rengar, you know? Okay. Like, yeah. uh, I think I think that's what they're thinking. Also, Whippo, like Whippo's Olaf and stuff like this is really, yeah. really threatening into like a lot of the count blind picks right now in top lane. So. I think it makes sense why they're going red side. Honestly, though, that a lot of a lot of credit deserved by Whippo. If he is really that game warping, that it's like not only can you not blind pick, you have to go red side, and you're not even getting a good counter pick. 
like that means one player is really screwing you in draft. I mean, I think Impact is also kind of weak in draft, to be mm -hmm. fair. Like, yeah. I, I think like he doesn't really play a lot of the really good counters to, to a lot of the blind picks, which hurts them a lot in draft. Yeah, so that is definitely something that TL will have to try to adapt to. It's looking like Sen and Nautilus bot. We have Varus and Rel on the other side. So it is going to be another Varus game here for Yawn. Uh, are you more of a fan of, of the Lethality Varus or on hit style? Because I, I got really worried for TL once the Renekton got that far ahead and it's Lethality because it was kind of like, oh, who's going to deal with, with the beefy problem? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really hard because the whole comp is ranged and then they have one melee champion or two melee champions that are just giga fed all of a sudden out of nowhere. So it's really hard to build around. And I mean, I, I, I don't think that Lethality Varus is too bad against like tanks. You can still kill them, obviously, with the W, but... It, the the on hit Varus definitely one shots the tanks. Playing tanks against that feels unplayable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the change ups that Team Liquid opted in for Ooh. was banning the Talia instead of the Senna, which is why we have the Senna Nautilus locked in for FlyQuest. But Jensen has gone to his third pick after the Oriana and the Talia, which is the Huey. For those that still don't know, that Azir <laughs> is still globally banned around all major regions, and Team Liquid have opted in for the Ziggs. Ziggs. I mean, everyone kind of rags on APA for being a Ziggs one trick, but if you're going to leave it up, you can't blame a guy for playing it. It's good. I'm glad he picked it. I mean, I think I think Ziggs has a lot of different strengths and people aren't really used to playing against it. I'm sure that they have a good plan against Ziggs considering they're giving it to APA, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a good shot for TL to have APA. I mean, Ziggs. I think it... So if you're if you're not looking at this from the FlyQuest side, obviously you, you have to pick your jungler, you have to pick your top laner. Are you now concerned about getting some more dive in, something to be able to get in the back line and deal with the Varus, to deal with the Ziggs, especially if it's a Lethality Varus. This is an annoying poke comp already being built up here by TL. Uh -huh. So presumably you need something to go in there with the Senna and Nautilus. Yeah, ball. you want some sort of engage. I mean, there's, there's a lot of... There's not many options in top lane, I feel, that are like super good, like blind pick, that are yeah. also good at engaging. Um, you could argue like Gragas, stuff like this, but usually it's the jungler, something like Javan maybe in jungle, something like Wukong that can get on top of the backline, I think would definitely help. Obviously, Vi is already banned out, so that, that hurts their chances mm -hmm. of getting that champion, which is very good against uh, a diving. So with some of the bans now coming through, obviously, focus towards top lane in the second phase. We have the Olaf getting banned out. We have the Renekton getting banned out. Talk me through what you're thinking of in these two top laners' shoes, what ban you might be wanting from Bebo's side, you know, what champion you might be looking for here. As Whippo, I mean, it, it's kind of hard. Obviously, they, they clearly burned Olaf because Whippo will play Renekton, I mean, Olaf into Renekton, and they want to take the Renekton away because clearly Impact does not have a good counter to the Renekton. Now, Whippo will likely probably just find pick something like Aatrox or one of the other, like, you know, kind of <laughs> normal top laners, <laughs> maybe something like Jace. He, blinds, he bans Nah here, so maybe possibly Cassante or Udia he's looking for. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, could also just be looking for Aatrox, but I think that Impact will likely play Jax into Aatrox on five, which I think is quite a good matchup for Jax. So um, it's kind of difficult to blind here for Whippo, considering he also didn't ban like Malphite for Jace, for example, or something like this. So I'm, I'm actually confused on what he's going to look to blind pick here. All right, well, it's Lee Sin uh, that's going to be locked in for MT. Does this change your, your thought at all? You know it's a relatively strong early game jungler on top side. You know, is that actually shifting what you might be considering picking? I mean, realistically, you pick Lee Sin. You already have set up on your bot side, yep. so it's pretty easy to find Lee Sin cues. You can, you can look for it at a lot of different angles. I think Lee Sin's generally just a strong 2v2 jungler, and likely they will just save counter pick for five. Picking on four, you don't really have a lot of good options uh, for TL. Um, so it is going to be Udyr for Whippo. Yeah, um, that's a uh, classic, classic Whippo. Let's see if uh, the Darius is coming out from Impact on five here. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way. Oh, thinking, thinking of Impact Champion Pool, what would you want to see him play into this? Like, Impact has played some kind of more, like, niche champions as counter picks, things like Mord into tanks, and he, he does have his champions that he'll bring out. Um, but, you know, knowing what he's played this year, knowing what you know, oh, what do you expect? Oh, oh, oh. I mean, uh, I feel like knowing what he's played, it's like there's no really good pick on five here. Realistically, if you play like TF or something, you pick TF on five, you have a lot of control on side lanes, you have Ziggs, you have a lot of kill threat and all the immobile carries, you win your lane. Um, you could play something like Jace maybe, but Impact once again doesn't play that champion, so it's, I feel like he's going to pick something like Aatrox or, or something like this, and it's just going to be kind of bad. I hope he doesn't though. Uh, <laughs> I think that reaction says it all that we needed. Yeah. We save five pick for Cassante Out of 10, that's a, into yeah. the Udyr. I mean, Cassante doesn't win your team the draft on five here. Like, I feel like right now it's kind of hard. I mean, you obviously have Ziggs Varus poke. You have yep. a way to win the game, but I feel like there's so many better options than Cassante. But obviously, he doesn't really have many options. So. Sure. Meanwhile, FlyQuest, we know that the 
Udir was locked in, but the big thing that I was excited for is Inspired Viego. I mean, this guy has yep. literally gotten pentakills he did. on the major <laughs> One of the only stage. junglers, it feels like, to ever get a pentakill. <laughs> <laughs> for seemingly how so many people talk about, oh, Viego's such an easy champion to get resets with and pentakills with. It's still one of the coolest things to see as they just completely smurf on a fight. And when it's Inspired does it, it, it's definitely super flashy. Yeah. There's not generally kind of the, some of the more common pairings though i would say generally when you go with viego you have a lot of upfront burst yeah quake can burst pretty hard if you can actually hit your full combo yeah but we're looking at udir senna like these are not the super high upfront damage champions you're thinking of a lot of people play like viego ari and and things like that uh i think it's very likely that the reason why they played viego is obviously you have a very strong jungle 1v1 and top lane, when you're blinding Udyr, you'll likely have a lot of control of the lane. You'll have a lot of proxy timers. Mm -hmm. I think what they'll likely do in top side here is they'll look to proxy on Udyr, invade the enemy jungler with Viego being stronger than Lee Sin in early game. Yeah. Obviously, Udyr having a lot of timers against Cassante. The big thing, too, is that whenever you are playing Lee Sin, most of the time you cannot get a defensive ward for yourself as the jungler because right. you want to save that ward for ward hops early on. So a lot of times, at least especially saw it in Challengers League as well, you would see players proactively invade against Lee Sin just knowing that that is something against them. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. It's gonna be a banger, I yes, hope. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just like game one. I mean, Team Liquid put up a hell of a fight in game one. We're gonna see if that also pays true. In game two, as we are on the rift, FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. For those who are just tuning in, FlyQuest currently one up in the series. It was a hell of a fight put up by Team Liquid, but they are still down and they're the ones on the back foot. So I feel like I, I know based off your reactions from some of the draft, but. Uh, we do have a sideline interview, so we're going to head on over to Emily with Team Liquid Coach Spawn. Hello, I'm here with Team Liquid Coach Spawn after game one. First of all, obviously recovering from the loss, what was your talk with the boys in between games? Uh, pretty much the top lane was just a disaster, right? But bottom lane went pretty good for us. So we, we just said that, you know, if top lane didn't explode like that, we're pretty confident uh, in the game. Uh, we think it's easier for us to replicate our win conditions than it is for them to replicate theirs. So we're pretty happy. All right, and then obviously I never ask specific draft questions because you guys give me nothing. But in terms of executing this draft, what would you like to see from TL early? I mean, I think our draft is really easy this time, actually. We got like Rel Ziggs, Varus. Like, it's not all that complicated to see what people will want to do in this draft. So hopefully we can just throw some bombs at them and they die. All right, well, we'll see if that happens. Back to you, Rafa. All right. So Meanwhile, how FFable is this game now? Uh, I mean, the, <laughs> if you're Whippo. That was some, some top tier analysis from Spawn. I like it. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I think TL had a pretty good plan. They knew that Whippo wanted to invade, it on the red, invade them on the red buff because he was very strong level one. So they sat at 115 in the bush. He was looking to run through Tribush. And then they chunked him really hard. I think that Whippo possibly would have died if Santi landed the third Q here. But realistically, I mean, Udi is kind of broken, so he might be able to just sustain oh. through. Oh. I mean, it, it is kind of broken, so you might go to the sustain <laughs> through the, the Cassante's poke here. Um, I mean, Cassante's Whippo, kind of weak. Whippo was down so much HP, but now he has just completely equalized the health advantage. Yeah, and now Cassante has no ghost, and Viego and ran straight there. top lane with, and he has no ward, so he is probably just going to die here, very, very likely. Impact uh, is looking a little cooked here. He has W, but has he's flash. Like, maybe he's he can out one the one. W. There one, it is. Please. Yeah! Oh. First blood for Inspired. All right, that is actually crazy that uh, Udyr wins from that position after how bad that level one was. Yeah. I mean, he's starting Ding Rate Deering, had to use both pots instantly and started <laughs> at, what, 150 HP maybe in the lane? Yeah. So pretty crazy. Impact now has to TP back. That is two games in a row where Impact TP back with his only buy being a refillable. This time it's even worse yeah. as he died before that happened too. Complete disaster for him, but... To be fair, it's not too bad. I mean, Udia doesn't get the kill, so he doesn't get too big of a lead, and Cassante can farm up pretty easily in this matchup. Plus, Lee Sin obviously gets the enemy red buff, um, and Diego doesn't really have a red buff now, but at the same time, he has a Ruby Crystal Longsword running into this fight, so I'm surprised. Charges face first into the Shield Breaker. Why are they fighting? Uh, we'll find out Six soon. Here. Yon's gonna get caught up by this root. The dredge line connects on an Umti, but AP is here, so it's a four on three. Fly quest, don't lose a man. I don't think no one burned any summoner spells either. Yeah, there's just the ghost from Yon was popped there as he was trying to get over there and, and help out in that situation. But uh, they are going to be able to at least push them out. AP8 makes the roam. He does end up TPing back down towards mid lane. So we're going to watch this one more time. Not really much to talk through, though, in this one. As... Yeah, they just have no ghosts yeah. on either. Sante has no E, so pretty free kill. Almost got a kill, though. That was very, very really close. close. I think Whippo could have just kited away a little bit earlier, but... Yeah. 
One auto attack, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. His expressions are yeah. so funny, man. Impact's for sure tilted. That's yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I would feel if, if after that game one and then that game two goes like this from that position feels really, really bad so for impact. The observer just checked. Bufo literally hit one HP. That's crazy. Like actual one HP. <laughs> Not the, oh, bro, he was one HP. Yeah, he was actually, was actually one, one HP. HP. <laughs> <laughs> that is... That is so sad. Yeah. And that kind of stuff can snowball, right? You know, it's like you yeah. miss out on that kill. Now you sometimes then miss out on the next kill just barely. Mm -hmm. And that can be a really frustrating cycle in League. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we talked about that Impact being a tenured career player and, um, can, and can handle the mental endurance. I mean, this is a lot <laughs> to endure right now. For sure. He has to have a very strong mental. But right now, TL is actually looking to crash this top wave. And it looks like it's going to be a complete banger in the top side. Now, Masu with the roam. It's a three on one because Umti is completely cut off. Oh, can he ward hop over the wall? It's just a flash. Nice maneuvers from Umti. But the flash follow from Inspired doesn't land the Spectral Maw. But just one more blade of the Ruined King takes out Umti. Oh, two early kills for Viego as well is so devastating. This champion is so OP when it's ahead. It's able to get its own resets. It's so hard to take down. Just a really smart roam from Masu that made all the difference. This is some of the power that people talk about with Senna TK, but Senna Nautilus in this case, but same principle, is that you are not locked down towards that bottom lane. It's so hard to dive these tanks that are farming down there. So he can make this roam towards Grubs, surprises him, punishes Umti, loses his flash. That is rough. And what Umti was actually looking to do here, they were trying to crash the top wave that was slow pushing out. And and obviously, Koja J was also coming up to 3v3 top side. And he just face checked the bush way too fast. He should just be running into the top wave and trying to crash that wave together, but ends up making a pretty bad mistake there. Now, Inspired's in a very good position to carry this game. It does mean that is not going to get that much farm in this 2v1 setup. Yeah. As Yon and Core JJ are just going to continue crashing this wave in. I mean, this is almost two turret plates. Not quite. Inspired is also going to be here to make sure that they can't get the second crash in, but in oh. fact, Going for all out onto Whippo. It's level six versus got level him. six. He got He's got him. the power. And there it is. Impact nice. gets retribution in the top lane. Nicely done. Even with missing out on that last kill by one HP, gets a solo kill anyway. And it is, Jan, we haven't touched on this. It is going on hit this time around. Hmm. So there are obviously some pretty beefy members over on the other side. It's going to be Udyr building tank. It's going to be Busio on the Nautilus building tank. Uh, and he is quite far ahead. Uh, obviously, Busio, you know, was kind of the victim of the roam that does you know, get, cost him something, uh, as he had to lose a lot of the farm down on bot side. But this is plates going down. It's Yawn getting pretty far ahead. It's them taking a dragon. So honestly, looking not that bad at all for GL. And funnily enough, the reason why Udia couldn't base there was actually because he killed the Lee Sin. So uh, Umti <laughs> inted, and then Udia could not recall, and Kasante <laughs> got back to the lane before he recalled. So it was actually quite a good play from Umti. Very well played from him. Wow, Tactical brilliant. int. Nice. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Yeah, he this. called a mistake. He was seeing two steps ahead. Exactly. He's a lot smarter than me, this yeah. guy. It's the, that's the passport diff, as, uh, as Ben calls it. <laughs> <laughs> An Oast jungler would never. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they actually got the drag, first dragon trading for a red buff in topside camps. Uh, so Viego's going to get a little bit of a lead, but realistically. Ooh. Chain of Corruption right on to Busio. Might be in trouble. Sonic Dead. Wave connects. And he ward hops in to maximize the execute damage on the resonating strike. Yeah, nicely done. Didn't even have to use the ulti there for Lee Sin, so... Uh, you know, no no point in using your summoners. Masu is going to have to leave, though. There's no way you can stay on this until Nautilus comes back. So the TP will come through. We'll be giving up a little bit more farm, though. And again, a little bit more gold lost there as two plates now falling on that bottom side. And Yawn out to a really good start. And this game, um, Barris is in a really, really good position. And usually when you have these tank top laners, you want your AD carry to be in a very, very good position because mm -hmm. whoever kills the front first usually wins the fight. Um, and now with Varus being so far ahead, um, and in a really good position in lane, I think it's actually puts them in a pretty good position to fight team fights very well. They also have pretty good peel for him, right? Like, you know, being able to have Lee Sin for disengage kicks, you know, satchel charge coming through, and obviously uh, you have the, all the CC from Rel, you have the ability to, to, to peel as well pretty well on Cassante. Uh, do you think this is going to be, you know, very much like a front to back game, or do you still think uh, Teal will look for, for play, look for dives, or will be more defensive? I think it's really hard to look on the Udia side this mm -hmm. game. I mean, realistically, you have Cassante and Rel not really killing anyone on the, on the Udia side. They could look on Hui's side with Lee Sin. Lee Sin is a very good champion at finding picks. Um, 
but I do think it will likely come down to, you know, dragon stacking, dragon team fights, and hopefully they can get some side towers with Ziggs. Maybe they can end up getting this bot tower, rotating Ziggs down and, and using W on the tower, and that'll be one way they can maybe snowball and get some gold. All right, so FlyQuest has a slight gold lead. Which team would you rather be playing for, though, at this point? Um, I mean, at this point, I'd, I think I'd rather be blue side. Uh, it's kind of close, to be honest. It's not a big difference. I'd rather be the Cassante right now, I guess, just because I don't feel like Udi is going to do much in this game, but um, Cassante will at least have some control of some team fights. I think he's in a pretty good spot now after getting that solo kill to be pretty strong in team fights. Yeah, speaking of uh, impacts, Cassante and Whippo in the top lane, we got some stats about these two top laners who I think many would agree have been the best two top performing top laners during the regular season mm -hmm. and this is what they've got to sport it yeah, yeah. i mean uh, i think i think they're pretty similar as a player to be honest with you uh obviously bupo has a lot more versatility in draft but overall impact and bupo are very good in the laning phase they generally play team fights very well they understand compositions in the overall game very well um, just because they have so much experience so far right now flyquest bringing the numbers advantage to secure what should be six scrubs for themselves Rest of Team Liquid are trying to feint towards the river. Umti trying to get in range to see if he can at least smite one of them to guarantee at least it won't be six, but all six scrubs are secured by FlyQuest. APA is pushing on the bottom side of the map, gets the force TP out of Jensen. And so far, FlyQuest kind of rocking. Oh, Jensen's gonna fire out the Spiraling Despair. It's a teleport coming in from Whippo. APA is oh, but he solo kills Jensen before Whippo gets there. And if Impact can get there in time, he can bail out APA out of a bad situation. He's out of there. Nicely done by APA. Teal know they can't challenge at the grub, so APA just stays bot, gets a plate, chunks out Jensen with a perfectly timed ult as he, he comes something. in. I heard him I, type something. I heard the typing as well. Maybe we'll get to see it, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is huge, man. He gets the solo kill and survives. Nicely done by APA. Showcasing the power of the Ziggs, and now he just TPs straight back towards top. At the end of the first game, for those that didn't get to see as we tossed a break, we got to see the comms from Jensen. He said, <laughs> I have never seen someone talk so much trash for being so bad. APA just solo killed this guy. Uh, yeah, that that can get in your head, man. When, you, when you're oh. getting frustrated, that's why. I don't know how you feel about this. But if players are typing like that, I feel like it should just be in pre-mute before exactly. the series. Don't let them get in your yeah. head. I used to have JoJo blocked. Uh, he was annoying as hell. <laughs> APA, APA is definitely a Do new Do you still block. have him blocked on your team? I mean, he doesn't type any timers <laughs> in chat, so I, I think I have him blocked still, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, it's, like, as funny as the trash talk is, hearing Jensen you know, talk about that in comms, to me, was like, APA is kind of in your head. Like, he, maybe, maybe Jensen's APA's head too, but you know when you're saying that kind of stuff and then he solo kills you, you're tilted. Oh, yeah. It, he's definitely he's definitely way playing worse uh -oh. more than APA is. Oh, Ooh. the flash W doesn't connect on the APA. He still has a flash. The satchel Fine. charge gets him out of range and he flashes the severing bolt. I mean, I think he's not just in Jensen's head. He might be in Aspire's head too. <laughs> a nice little backstep to actually dodge that stun and now they're looking for another. Lucio might be in trouble. Death charge on the two, but Umti is here. Oh, was trying oh. to predict the flash, but it's a little too wow. late. It doesn't matter. Yon cleans up the kill on the back end of it. Zimpact might be chasing down Whippo. Should be fine as he just runs back to the tower. Yeah, he's going to be able to get out of there, but nice set of plays for TL, getting a couple kills across the map. Uh, as they're able to find the pick onto Busio. And again, Yon getting more and more accelerated. It's not the end of the world if the kind of farming tank in this situation gets a bit behind, but he's down 40 CS and the Nautilus is not going to be strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, man. Enough. I mean, yeah, he, he's definitely going to be in the head. I hope they have him muted at this point. Um, <laughs> also, looking at uh, specific to Ziggs right now, both mid and bot towers are very, very low. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ziggs just push this top wave and run straight mid and just satchel the tower. Mm -hmm. um, and just run straight bottom and satchel that tower as well. It's going to be a quite a big gold difference. Like, he's going to get an extra, like, 1k gold right now just by running to these lanes, and it's pretty hard for Fly to do anything about it. I will say, while Busio is pretty far behind, Master's doing a good job getting souls. You know, we're 13 minutes in. He does have 59 souls thus far. Berserker moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, deja vu. APA has no flash, and Busio doesn't have the ulti, but... They've cut him off from his escape route, so he's just gonna farm up the minion wave. No way for APA to get out. The Spiraling Despair is gonna take him out in the end. And FlyQuest, they finally got him. Yeah, they got him. They keep on coming back for him. They finally do take him out. Um, we'll see if there's gonna be anything more off that though. Smart when you're in that situation where you know you're guaranteed dead, just kill the wave. Yeah. They can't take any plates off the back of that. 
Uh, so we do have, obviously, more playoff matches coming up. It is going to be 100 Thieves versus Energy in lower bracket on Saturday. And then Sunday, it will be the loser of this versus Dignitas. And realistically, APA there, he, he didn't need to hit the top tower. He tried to hit the top tower instead of just rotating mid and getting mid tower with his W. So I think it's quite a bad mistake for him to make. Oh, Chain of Corruptions, cleanse from Masu. Oh, could be good. And the Q from Core JJ, Masu preemptively flashes just in case Core wanted to line up with his own flash and guarantee the kill. Yon is performing. That's what we like to see out of the bot lane. Yes, sir. Yeah. This was actually, I, I don't know what your opinion is on it, but Vulcan, when he was uh, on the desk after your series yesterday, said that he thought Yon and Cortegio were the best bot lane in the LCS. Damn. Thoughts? That's, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't feel like any bot lane is like super good. I feel like Masu, Busio, and our bot lane are both really good too, but mm -hmm. um, it's pretty close. I think Yon and Cortegio could definitely be argued for. Jensen might be in trouble. Still has flash available, but Impact and Core JJ want to cut off his path. He pops. Nicely oh, timed. nice terrifying visage for the fear, interrupting Core JJ. Yeah, that was actually perfect. You know, didn't throw it out early, reacted to the ability there from Core. Uh, is able to get out without using his flash. That's something I feel like Jensen is always really good at, is waiting for abilities to react to them. He doesn't always try to anticipate. He's always been very good at dodging <laughs> skill shots. And now the oh. whole squad, man, there is five bots. You've been typing APA, too much. I hope you have your pen ready because you're going to sign some fan signatures from all five members of FlyQuest. The teleport comes in from Impact. But it's too late. They've already got their man that they want. Everyone's they coming from TL. Teaming. They take out Inspired. It's a huge He's shutdown. The, the rest of Team Liquid, the reinforcements are here. Wimpo is run down by Yawn. The rest of the members of Team Liquid have corralled around FlyQuest. Spiraling Despair is going to be huge on the damage. Core JJ will eventually pop as Busio's left to die. But Yawn <laughs> finds Jensen in the back half as well. ABA is in their heads, man. You're going to send five bot for that dive. They end up losing so much more. Four kills. They lose the tower, which is actually the first tower knocked down. So even more gold going TL's way. Sure, you got the Ziggs, but at what cost? Yon is likely going to have a Rage Blade soon here. He is so far ahead. Here is the dive. We can see it one more time. There's not even minions to be able to actually tank this back up. So, so much early damage goes on to Whippo. So as everyone is coming down from TL, they're already all softened up. Yeah, and, and it, it obviously cleared the wave with his ulti, but I think they just, they just really wanted to kill him. I think Jensen must have been calling that one for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a tight racer diff, man. Yeah, they, they, had the, they had the move from bot lane. They don't know where Lee Sin is. He's coming off of base from the Herald. And, Sante has TP. I think it's just such a mental gap, honestly, from APA. He's too good, this guy. Look at him little dancing He's in his chair. He's just vibing. <laughs> APA may have gone down, but he has won the mental war against FlyQuest, forcing so many of their resources to be invested just to shut him down. If I am FlyQuest's coach, I am getting on all my players' PCs and disabling chat. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we cannot be serious. I agree. Busio might be in trouble here, severing bull, get some decent damage on the umpty and impact. Busio's forced to flash. I mean, he's out of there, but that gives Team Liquid priority gone. for this mid wave. Yeah, you have the Herald for the Ziggs. They're gonna look to go for an extra one maybe here and look to W the tower as Ziggs. It's gonna be really, really hard for Tail to, I mean, hard for Fly to deal with this rather. Teleport is forced out of Jensen. Here comes, or it's Busio, my mistake, impact. Separated from the rest of the squad Protecting. here. Doesn't have all out, so he can't go over the wall quite yet. Oh. So he positions for Inspired. The alley oh. right into the rest of the team. Can FlyQuest carry the momentum forward? Whippo's charging on the right side of the flank. Jens is trying to deal the damage as well, but he's... Uh, can we look at Masu as well? He finds another frontline member, but Yon is just firing arrow after arrow. He steps up, the flash forward. Yon puts him down into the ground. Jensen is forced away, and the rest of the team liquid stand victorious. When on hit Varus is this fed, it doesn't matter what you're doing to the rest of the team, man. This guy stacks lethal tempo. He is going to crush you. I'm looking at these low health bars on various TL members, and I'm just looking at Yon sitting there, <laughs> Legolas in the background. Exactly. <laughs> He's annihilating all of them, and right now, Yon is so fed. Obviously, he has no flash, so maybe Maybe Nautilus can look for a play on him, but he is just so fed and they have to somehow kill him to win a team fight from this point. Yeah, and here it is one more time. You know, Impact obviously was in a pretty bad spot. Inspired. He was split from the team. Junglers do not have play against Kassante. Why are you giving him third Q into ult here? Yeah. He has no no way of getting over the wall. Maybe his ears was up in like one second, but realistically, I don't know why you're giving him third Q in ult. That's really yeah. bad for Inspired. Yeah, very likely Jensen could have actually just killed him you know, in, in that pool. Plus the rough part is Jensen went around there. So Jensen was so yeah. separated from the team. Exactly. So he was very late to arrive because he walked all the way around. Then the fight gets separated. He brings him back into the middle of his squad. Inspired. 
who started 2-0, and zero, by the way. We were thinking, or at least I was thinking, yep. he was going to be in a great position to carry this game. Yeah. He hasn't been able to do anything since then. I mean, I don't know if it's the APA chat log messages that it's really <laughs> throwing FlyQuest for a loop here, but something is going on in the comms. They are not playing as cleanly as we would expect. A first seed going into the playoffs should be against Team Liquid, who are the fourth seed. And Yon is playing really, really well these past two games. It's actually very impressive to see Yon playing so well, and it doesn't really feel like he's making a lot of big mistakes. So uh, I'm glad to see that Yon is, uh, is the GOAT. I've always felt like when he's at his best, he has a really high ceiling, yeah. right? And, um, you know, it's just been about, can he find that consistency? He has no summoners, and he is in an awkward spot. We'll they, see if he can get out. They need to protect him. Death Charge connects right onto the flashless yawn. Dawning Shadow gets some damage. The Spiraling Despair could just be his doom. And he is taken out of the fight by Jensen. Now up to APA to see if he can find the damage. He already threw out the Mega Inferno Bomb. And Impact trying to kite out Busio, but lives at the end of it. Flippo wasn't even in the fight. He's been split pushing on the top side of the map. Yeah, he's going to be able to chip away at that tier two. That is a, a slow burn, though, for Udyr. Does not kill that thing very fast. Uh, does have the grub damage to help out with that, but they're going to be able to go down, get this tier two bot. So we'll be able to claim that. Not too bad. It's a good pick on the Yawn. They need to try to force around the missing summoners that you were talking about, Fudge. Um, but clearly, you know, TL are able to get something back at the very least. Yeah, I feel like maybe they shouldn't have been so split on the map. Maybe Varus should be the one in bot lane, just mm -hmm. so that he can't get engaged on from, you know, both sides of mid lane. It's pretty hard to not get engaged on at that point. But um, Udia getting this extra tier 2 gold doesn't matter too much. I feel like he's still going to die pretty quickly to the Varus. And Ziggs getting that tier 2 gold can hurt a lot with a lot of the poke. They don't have too much MR on their carries. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see them just hold full control of this top side here as TL. It did feel like... Uh... Some of the stuff didn't actually really get blocked onto Yon as well. Like the spiraling his bear got hit onto him. Mm -hmm. If MT steps forward and tanks that, maybe he's able to live, right? Because right. it it did kind of hit that that knife's edge where if Varus doesn't die right there, he gets back and you can't funnel into that choke exactly. and all of a sudden he goes crazy. Yeah. So exactly, yeah. It is one of those situations where if you're missing your summoners as an AD, sometimes you just need someone to in for you and soak <laughs> the skill shots, right? Like he's the most important member of TL right now. If they yeah. keep him alive, you can win that fight. Yeah, I think one of the one of the jungler support must have been in a bad position because Cassante was was right in front of him and blocking as much as he could. But mm -hmm. realistically, the other teammates had to do something to help him though. Oh, teleports. Oh, double, double teleports coming in for APA. He has to walk to the right side of the jungle where he can join his team. He flashes the safety, but now they're getting pincered around. Can they buy space? 4JJ tries to find the flank on the right side, and they have to peel towards that side of the flank, but APA is taking on the fight. Umti's back into the back line. Yawn can't hit. He was separated from the fight for the first few seconds. Now he's trying to hit as well, but the Yondo. rest of Team Liquid, they're starting to get taken down as Inspired is looking for the resets, finds the Spectral Mall, but he gets oh. bursted by Yawn! And now it's a three-on-two against FlyQuest. Has the dodge to severing Jensen's bolt. Low. Jensen is looking for more damage. He doesn't know where Yon, he is. Is he going to try to assassinate him from the back? Line. Oh, he's just getting a recall out. He's out of there. Wow. Yeah, well played there. Yawn early on couldn't Wait. actually hit very Wait. hard. He's going to find Masu. So much HP. Oh! Oh! Trade one for one. Yeah. Nicely actually, done. It actually turns out a little bit better for the Varus here because Senna now yeah. has no flash. Yeah. Varus keeps his flash and Varus gets the shutdown on Senna. So this actually ends up pretty bad for FlyQuest despite it being looking like a good fight from the start with the double TP. Yeah, Yon, Yon is actually playing these fights really, really well. I mean, he couldn't contribute that much early because of the depth charge. The Nautilus throws ult on him. You just have to back it out, right? So, you know, they get that early ult on him. He has to kite back because otherwise he's going to die with the follow-up CC. But then he walks around that right side of the flank, starts getting damage out, starts really pumping here, and does a good job to actually just focus down Inspired as he goes over the wall, tries to burst him out with Masu. Jensen wasn't in position, unfortunately, uh, to be able to follow up on that, and they're able to get that kill back. Yeah, Inspired got a little bit too excited then. <laughs> I feel like Senna should have been able to just auto W, auto... Mm. I mean, I like, he, wow. hit, he hit everything. Yeah, but, but he, he cancelled one of the orders he, at the start. I feel like he should yeah. have won, perhaps, but it's hard to tell. Maybe he could have flashed a Varisi or something. Yeah. Yeah. Also tough in those kind of panic moments. Yeah, of course, for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. really difficult. He also wasn't expecting Varus to be in that bush, clearly, so. Well, they're on a Baron, and this is going to go down in a hurry here with the Varus. It's another strength of this champion. Yep. And now you have to walk through the Ziggs Mines, walk through Impact, who's in position to zone, but it's not actually dying that quick. So FlyQuest will get here, and it's going to have to likely be a turn unless they think they can just peel Inspired. Yeah, they're not committing all the damage to it quite yet. 4,000 HP. Yon is still hitting, but they find Inspired, and they want to lock him down immediately. But Busio finds APA in the back half. Busio using the Death Charge to go through all every single Yon. member. Flashes right on top of Yon. Yon is completely isolated from the rest of his team. FlyQuest have found the vital carries for Team Liquid, and they run away with the
this fight. This was such a close fight, back and forth in so many of them. And then now, FlyQuest just crushed them. Five for zero and the Baron. And just like that, everything TL have been working towards all game long is gone. Yeah, the position on that Baron is really bad. Usually whenever you hit Baron, you need to have people that can hold the, the chokes so that they can't run in and kill your ADC because it's going to be in a bad position. And here, they, they really couldn't hold the chokes because Sante was just getting chunked to the death. Six tried his best, but he couldn't really do anything. I feel like the Baron style was just a bad start from Team Liquid. It did not pan out great for Team Liquid. What was a 3,000 gold advantage going into that objective is now gone. So talk us through what you would like to see in this situation. So realistically, they're trying to go too fast on the Viego. I think Ziggs getting engaged on from the start is really bad. I think Lee Sin is trying to like kill the Hui instead of just healing his ADC. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't really feel like you can kill the Hui 1v1. Maybe he thought his teammates could help him, but realistically, I think it's just in that river, it's really hard to actually peel your ADC and just starting the Baron without full vision control is kind of bad, I think. Yeah, it seemed to me like they just really overcommitted for the kill on Inspired, right? Yeah. Like, um, as soon as he ults away, there's just so much distance made. Center Root hits up a couple members of Team Liquid here, but was able to make it on out. Down to 50% HP, Dredge Line connects onto Umpty, tries to ward hop, but he was interrupted by Busio, and the rest of FlyQuest clean up another kill. Yeah, that's rough. Umpty goes down again, and you know, thinking back to the previous fight as well, had Umpty just been playing on his AD and just kicks Udyr away, Nautilus isn't going to solo kill that guy, right? right? So, you know, they are, do make some mistakes. They are going to pay for it big time, though, because this is a six scrub team with Baron, means they're going to get full access to your towers. They're going to be knocking them down in a hurry. And now TL are going to have to kind of hold the fort here, try to weather the storm. They have some pretty good wave clear, but it's going to be tough. Yeah, they're likely just going to end up having you give, him, give this inhib. Yeah. And six grubs, it's just impossible to do Masu anything. is just wailing away at the inhibitor tower. This inhibitor should follow next. Umpty is still not up for another five seconds. And just like that, FlyQuest have broken this game wide open. An open lane that Super Minions will be pouring through, just adding more pressure for the side of FlyQuest. Yeah, and they can walk back potentially and take this dragon on the way out if they want. Uh, they are heading back out on the map, looking to ping up towards top lane. So Inspired going to be heading over to the dragon. I'm a little bit confused that they're kind of just splitting on the, on the map like this, because now it feels like there is an angle that TL could actually walk in and take the dragon, but they obviously don't know where yeah. all the FlyQuest is. They have absolutely no information on the map yeah. here, and Udis is going to push... Oh, APA is maybe getting caught out in here. No, he is not. Okay. Um, I think it, it's likely they're just going to play on the top side and ignore Dragon. Dragon Soul isn't really a condition at this point in the game. It's super, super late for FlyQuest, so they're just going to try to make the most use of that Baron in top uh, lane. Okay, well, he has Flash, and he's got MT in his... Everyone is coming though. If he keeps walking this way, he's walking into the Varus. Yeah, Whippo might just be but completely they're gonna lose towers mid. Yeah, I, yeah. Have, I think Whippo is just giving his life while FlyQuest maybe potentially just takes three towers, maybe an inhibitor on the back end of it oh as well. Gosh. I mean, Whippo's bought a lot of time knowing he escapes, right? The Mega Infernal Bomb, he's surrounded by his team, he's out of there! Whippo oh, just oh, throws up the gold TFT emote. The rest of Team Liquid are now trying to collapse. They have to force this fight while they have particularly a numbers advantage here. Umpty all inning everything on Nabustio. He's separated as Inspired is getting chased down by Impact. Umpty joins the fray as well. Inspired is taken out. Bustio is isolated. He's going to be gone in just a moment. But the rest of FlyQuest still have pressure through this bottom lane. Yeah, they do get those two towers mid, and Whippo does get out, but they lose multiple people. Jensen's going to die here likely as well. And then the question is, how much can TL get back? Uh, the TP should get him to safety. Um, but it is Yawn pushing up mid. They can go over towards the dragon, so they're going to get the dragon. It looks like they're not going to get much more than that besides just fixing some waves, taking the dragon, getting a bit of gold. Uh, but this is definitely getting pretty dicey. This is one of those games that uh, really is just going to come down to one big team fight, it feels like. Yeah, I think realistically, uh, Whippo's kind of trolling <laughs> by, by, by going for that top wave. His mid, his mid lane, there's four people on his team showing. There's no one on the enemy team showing. I think they could have just killed him earlier. At least he just kick a little bit better. Um, and then he just ended up getting his teammates killed and they lose Dragon. And all their Baron push is gone now. Zix can just clear all the waves. So they're going to have to wait till the next Baron to hopefully make a team fight happen and, and look to, you know, get the Baron and the game. Yeah, we'll say it's it's starting to feel like FlyQuest are, are struggling a little bit to deal with impact as well. Yeah. Um, but they don't have the most consistent damage. Obviously, Masu did end up getting LDR, but like Ghostblade into LDR isn't exactly the ultimate tank killing build. <laughs> so I think he kind of realized, oh, like I, I actually am the one that has to deal with the front line. So he's kind of pivoting. Um, but you know, impact does seem like he is he's becoming 
pretty tough to deal with. Yeah, because Jensen Dynamite for full on burst. He's just looking to one shot yeah. the back line you're here. You're not one shotting a Kane, Brooker, and Kasante. Nope. But At the same time, how do you really kill Huey this game? You know, yeah. he's he's also poking down a lot of people. You have to find a Lee Sin kick on him, but yeah. I don't think it's really easy for Lee Sin to find that kick on him. And I, I do feel like Kasante isn't going to be able to just stand there and deal with the center with Lord Doms hitting him. No, I don't think he can just solo him. But I guess from my point is point of view i'm thinking about it more he just needs to waste their time while yawn is hitting mm -hmm. right and if he can actually just stay alive longer than Bupo and inspired and busio and stuff then he's kind of doing his job you know yeah. less the solo mission and more which team is better equipped to actually kill the frontliners yeah the right story, the story of these two these fights have definitely been either one or two cases where Team Liquid Frontline, they believe in Yawn to carry the fight and they yeah. actually peel for him appropriately. And then the fights where they think, oh, Yawn's already dead, and they just try to Ooh. go for the backline instead. This is actually really interesting. It's a Seeker is picked up by Yawn. I was going to say, one of the things that he's been really struggling with is every single fight, Busio just throws ult on him and he has to back out. That's actually wasting so much of his time. He grabs Seekers here, so he can potentially immune that. You know, if they're full sending it onto him, I uh, will be able to have a little bit of that survivability. Uh, but this is not some tech I've really seen that much with on hit Varus. Um, obviously, AP Varuses often go into this, but. Uh, that is a fully different build. I think it's a. I, I think five six items makes a lot of sense. I think it's a yeah. good purchase for sure. Um, I just it's still feel stopwatch, like, though, I, will I just say. still feel like it's yeah, it's very expensive stopwatch. I still feel like Huey is just so hard to deal with. He's gonna have so much control of every choke and every bush. You have no real way of getting on top of him, and I I don't think Ziggs has that same sort of threat with compared to when you're comparing items. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, again, Jensen has basically a death cap on his opponent, right? Uh, there's the Seekers on the APA side, but, you know, Jensen has a really high damage build. Uh, we'll see if they're going to be able to find any sort of an angle, potentially a Lee Sin kick or, or some sort of really good engage from core. Um, but it obviously is tough, and they need to be able to create time for Yawn because they are less about the upfront damage, more about the sustained DPS, you know, with the Varus. But they've been doing a good job of kind of just spacing him out, throwing the Nautilus ult onto him if they can't actually fully pile in on him and kill him, then they all just kind of back away from him. They don't let him get lethal tempo stacks. They also have to deal with this ball wave right now. It's mm -hmm. still, still a super minion going to the end. APA is there now, but they're going to have to run. Oh. <laughs> that went straight through the tower. <laughs> Dude, dredge line is just a crazy ability in League of Legends, y'all. As Inspired is wrapping around, trying to see if they can look for a flank. Impact. Soaks up a lot of the damage already. Spiraling Despair thrown down into the top laner. MT looking for the kick into the core. JJ Magnet Storm. That was huge from Team Liquid, but can they carry this fight? Inspired is looking for the reset, but doesn't find it as the stasis from Yawn keeps him safe. Team Liquid just found a crucial play in the second game of the series. Man, this is exactly what I was talking about, though. They've been throwing the Null Assault onto Yawn every single fight. This time they didn't. They actually full sent it onto Impact, I think, of all people, yeah. trying to burst them down. And that allowed Yawn to go crazy in this fight it bought him so much time because it's all about stacking up lethal tempo getting those blight stacks up then you do the damage this time he was gifted the opportunity to do so and the seekers as well pay dividends as he used it on the heartbreaker from inspired as he ulted on top of him perfectly stasis is that Yawn plays it out well, and we'll see if they can secure it. Should be theirs. It's a teleport Fly from Bwipo to see if they can try and cut off any members here. Bwipo's gonna look to run one down, but they are just completely warded off. FlyQuest had full control of this Baron side, and they, they decided to, to just go on Cassante. They have complete control. They have poke with Huey, and they just completely <laughs> grief a fight. Lee Sin finds a beautiful kick. I think we need to get a replay on that kick, because Umti actually just one-shots the center, and this team fight couldn't even get flash off. And hold so much space. Oh, Jensen's in trouble. Oh no, Jensen. He has flash available. Teleport is coming in from Busio to see if they can salvage it. But Jensen's completely cut gone. off from the rest of the team. Impact is leading the charge now. See if he, if he can find another knockup on any of these members from FlyQuest. Team Liquid. That's soul, very likely. Yeah, five Jensen. on four. Yeah, Jensen gave over a freebie there. That is rough. I cannot believe these games. <laughs> <laughs> it's so such a banger. It's a, a, a preemptive flash from Masu. He was scared of impact, looking for the knockup there. The rest of Team Liquid, can they look for another play? Just completely pulling them off the mid lane. Dragon Soul is for the taking, and they are just guaranteeing it. Yep, going to be able to push up mid. I think they're seeing, okay, is there an angle to actually pressure the inhib? I don't think they saw it, so now they're just going to take the soul, guarantee that. Yeah, it's Cloud Soul. Yeah, it's not the one that people do love the most, but 20% flat move speed is incredibly strong. Yeah. I think people always feel you know, way too strongly about, oh, the proc, does it work well with my champion's ultimate? 20% move speed is 20% move yeah. speed. Cassante it's like, presses R and he runs a your carry. What are you going to do? Well, and when we'll you press R, that's even more. You get 40% boost plus 20% yeah. flat all exactly, the time. Yeah. So it's just like, they're going fast. Senna has no flash. MT is looking for the play. Just kicks Busio. 
And the impact is on Yo, the left side as though. well. Inspire is trying to look for the flank. They already take out Bustio. Can Inspire find the... No, he cannot! No reset city! Umpty right onto the back line, chasing out Jensen and Masu. But the front line is gone from FlyQuest, and a back line cannot be enough to stand up against Team Liquid's charge. Yeah, we'll see. Six. They're pressuring. They're going to look for the end here. Masu could be in some trouble. This would be a risky one to take. He doesn't have his ulti, so they're going to try to go for it. But there's only a couple minions, and there is low health bars. And Jensen... Ours has flash ult in two seconds. We look for it. Just keeping the minions protected. APA just completely blows up one Nexus turret. Impact getting critically low. Does not have teleport, so he can't recall and look to come back. He has to play on this health wave, and FlyQuest will keep this game alive for now. Yeah, it is really hard to push in away there. They did force out Jensen's flash, but look at the health bars here. You know, if, if you if you die on that push, they respawn, the game's over. Yep. So uh, they are going to have to back off here, but they did get Soul, they did get Baron, they are up 5k. TL have really clawed this game back and are looking to be in a commanding position now. Yeah, at this point of the game, they have no flashes on carries. How do you realistically play a game? the game? Like, they just take over the entire map at this point. I didn't see TL losing the game from this point. I mean, that was such a costly mistake from Jensen. Mm -hmm. Dying in, in mid really lost them a lot there. Because uh, now it is nearly an open Nexus. Just the one Nexus tower. It's soul. It's so much getting over. They're just going to look to go top here. Put the Ziggs W on the tower. One shot that tower. What the... Can they do? <laughs> <laughs> nice. What the fudge can they do? What exactly. the fudge can they do? <laughs> I have to say, as Team Liquid are on the doorsteps of this base, this is the most confident within this series that they have looked versus the rest of their regular season. Yawn has been performing incredible, even in the game one loss. APA, I know, has still had some flubs here and there, but he has been undeterred by any of the focus from FlyQuest, whereas when we watched the regular season, so many unforced errors was the story, but it looks like he's bringing his best for this series today. Yeah, yeah they're looking really good. I think Yawn especially really standing out in this one. Uh, and if they're not CCing him, he is destroying him. Could be the last chance here for FlyQuest, but I looking inspired. Almost died to an to Yawn there on the back, forced to flash. Inspired's gonna recall. This inhibitor tower already fell in the top side of the map, and they should make quick work of the inhibitor itself. Super Minions pouring in through the mid wave. She'll be pouring in soon through the top side as well. Flipple taking a lot of damage. There's the engage. The Magnus Sword run on top of it. AP and Yawn pouring as much damage as they need to. Impact Jensen inspired. All fall in a flash. And the rest of Team Liquid, victorious in their bounce back, will tie up the series in this second game. Oh, gonna go for one more kill in the Nexus. Not gonna be able to get it, but it is a win for TL. We're tied up one to one. What a game from Yon. It felt like any time they couldn't get Nautilus ult on him at the start of the fight, he was just absolutely roasting them. And in, in the final moments there, he had Flash, he had Zonius, and he knew how to play with that advantage. He was just walking forward, automing everyone, saying, I dare you, try to engage on me, I'll just Zonius. He gave me some 2022 Berserker vibes, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh, he played pretty well. he's he played, him? He played pretty well that game, I, I'll give it Damn. to him for sure. I was about to say, I have not seen Yon this confident on stage since his final series against 100 Thieves Academy in the Proving Ground Spring match. God, Jan, in his sophomore year of the LCS, where so many questions were levied against him after his rookie year and people questioning of like, oh, does he even really deserve rookie of the year for 2023? But Jan, in this series alone, after the regular season performance, this is, this is awesome for Team Liquid fans around the world. Yeah. Yeah, and also inspired, uh, just lost the game after being quite ahead in the in uh, uh -oh. mid game. So I, I expect some mental boom, possibly. APA is definitely in their heads. I don't know what they're going to do about that. Yeah, <laughs> well, let's see. A reminder to all you fans at home, you can cast your own votes for Kia MVP and Kia All Pro this year. Head over to KiaLCSAwards.com to place your vote. With that, let's head on over to the LCS Lounge to break that second game down. Hello, welcome back. Fudge is pushing I, that narrative. Yeah, it really is. Inspired he really, is gigaboomed really with the slightest bit of misfortune narrative. Just a little bit. Yeah. You know what's funny is like if there's someone out there that you just know your personality when you introduce two friends and you're just waiting <laughs> for that boom to happen, yeah, <laughs> he knows. He's aware. Let's get into highlights yeah. of that. Emily has the drawing tools because she has hands for drawing. What? I don't. Sad. I wish I had hands for video games instead, honestly. <laughs> uh, it was funny talking to Spawn and then coming out to this because he's like, I don't think they're going to have the same win conditions, right, with yeah. what happened topside. Yeah. Immediately, we are going to start 
in the top lane. Yeah, well, this was crazy just because Whippo had used all of his potions when he face checked yeah. a bush at level one and Umpty and Impact chunked him. That's disgusting. So, therefore, Impact is going to play more aggressive and he still turns it around with the one HP survival. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I love this. So, it wasn't, but then, yeah. Impact ends up getting his revenge. Yeah, this was really quick, too, because Whippo, of course, no mana, is trying to get his wave in. Impact just walks forward knowing that he's going to get hit six on the wave and he's able to That's get the solo kill. So, yes, not the same win condition as the last one. No, Gen like 10! APA, APA has a global taunt in this game. He did. I don't know if it's from the chat. I don't know if it's from, you know... No, Anything I mean, else, but look, yeah. Well, this was kind of the turning point because FlyQuest actually was ahead in the game here. Uh, he gets a lot of his cooldowns off. And I, I would say that Impact specifically yeah. being able uh, to grab Inspired while the turret was on him was pretty big. Yeah, I want to... It's hilarious they sent all five people and then that just allowed TL to collapse on them. Um, Yawn kind of is able to fire from the back line here too. Yeah. Ends up polishing off Jensen... And Busio ending up in the triple kill. Yeah, this fight next. here as well. I'm trying to remember this because this game. Oh, this is the one where Impact is gonna like drag him out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He oh, missed his God. ult as he was getting displaced by Huey. Inspired played yep. this fight pretty poorly. Yeah, and also Umti getting the Lee Sin kick. So it's just he's just getting ping pong. Inspired was just getting ping pong for this full fight. I realized it. Umti had an insane Lee Sin game. And he yes, did. kudos to Jan here off of what is so far a dominating uh, series for him. I thought the series then, might have been turning around right here. Yeah, exactly. This is when uh, this fight gets split. Umti does oh. get the kick onto Jensen, but there's no one really to follow up. Uh, and then APA dies Wait, let's, let's back this up. Yeah. Back up a little bit. Rewind. Back this one up because APA gets completely caught out here as they're, like, one of the dangers of starting Baron is if your peel off of it is not. So run it from here. You can see Busio gets to just walk straight up to APA. Yeah. No one can block the hook. Whippo can then walk straight up to him as well to chain the CC. And then Jensen can land all the skill shots. So that was uh, just frontline collapse by team. Yes, and usually yeah. for Udyrs, they'll try to do ult, like, RR or uh, WW in a team fight. He actually he went CC immune to walk past the front line to get straight on top Let's of Varus. So All right. This is it. Yeah, we're going to see this from Umpty's perspective. Bam! Wow, man. Let's go again. What an alley yeah. One more time. Rewind it and do it again. I just so like seeing it. In the middle of mid lane up top. Yep. Immediately <laughs> just sees it. Boop. What's funny is that Team Liquid had a content piece specifically around Umpty and some content creators like getting ward hop kicks to see if they can do yeah. it consistently. Well, he got the practice in. <laughs> yeah, he had, I mean, even in that last fight, we saw him getting that kick onto Jensen. There wasn't any follow-up damage. AP yeah. had already walked forward. But yeah. yeah, he had a really, really good good game. And when you're looking at kind of Umti being able to pilot something where he can make a difference, Lee Sin is one of his favorite champions because it's such a playmaker. Yeah, uh, fly selected blue side for next game. No subs, obviously. I would say one weird thing about that game to me was... Uh, when FlyQuest was ahead, they just deprioritized the Cloud Drake. And I swear, yeah. we've seen a couple games in a row where a team gets Cloud Soul and then just instantly wins. You were so yep. fast afterwards and winning the team fights. And Inspired, definitely, he should take this time to speak his mind, get people back on track. You could see uh, APA was was pretty confident. Whippo seems like he's chilling <laughs> at yep. the moment. So it'll be it'll be a, a interesting time. Yeah, I mean, I think there are points in this game they can review easily, right? And be like, okay next game shore up these execution errors i do think it's interesting though that they went to blue side considering that they have been s done yeah. so well saving r5 for Whippo in the past yep teal will get red in back-to-back -back games they've evened up the series and we'll see who will take the lead after this break thank you sir thanks good job we need to kite first i'm sure about yeah i think they're wasting time they go forward kite 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 that's good, that's good. I'm, I'm trying to let me let me heal off midway. Yeah, yep. they want to they want to trade, okay? Okay, now we don't need to think about bot. Five yeah. two. Okay, they look here. Okay. Looks right, looks right. Yeah. They're looking. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking. Yeah. Oh, they messed up. They messed up. Guys, watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Yeah, who are you hitting? Who are you? Sela, 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 Sela. Big one here. Big flash. Big flash. Come on, come on, young. Come on, young. Big flash. Big one. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Yeah, go, go. Big one flash. Guys, watch your wing. Yeah. I'm hitting this guy. No trouble. Yeah. Can we go there? He done. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl.
Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. Make more good in the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. Red Bull gives you wings.